So, day two of the Auric Nova 64 investigation. Uh, so yesterday I stopped when I was done uh, with the diagnostics cartridge, saying that I would ask a question on the throw. And yes, I got uh, some uh, some suggestions, and I had confirmation that with the two RAM chip, uh, the TMS4464, uh, are indeed 4-bit chip, which means the entire memory range uh, from 0 to 64K uh, is covered by each of the chip, but one is doing the four lower bits, and the other one is doing the four higher bits. And uh, the multiplexers and the, on the way the motherboard is organized, with these two four bits, we get the full byte. And this is the way this chip works: is that they only have eight bits of address uh, from A0 to A7. Uh, but you need 16 bit to fully address uh, the 64k of RAM. Uh, so the way it works is that these chips need to be addressed in two times. Uh, first, by using the RAS signal, or raw address job, where you basically select a page on the chip, you latch the value inside the chip with the RAS signal. And then you pass the rest of the bits, which is basically the columns, uh, to select which of the cell you want uh, on the second cycle, uh, the CAS. What that means is that both this chip uh, and the one from the Auric one, so that one is the 16K Auric one, uh, have exactly the same, same layout. It's the same multiplexer. They are also a Texas instrument, uh, but this one are TMS4416, and instead of having uh, uh, 32K of, of RAM inside, they have uh, only 8K, and the two of them do uh, the 16. And the beauty of the thing is because of the RASCA system, you did not need to have 16 pins for uh, accessing, so the same uh, addressing mode work for these chips which have a quarter of the memory capacity. And just to to the point that these are Auric 1 uh, motherboards. Here you can see Auric 1 16K, and that matches the white smudge we have here. So, the Auric Atmos, they have plenty of RAM chip here, uh, but the problem was more expensive to build. So, by reusing this system and not changing anything on the motherboard, you can actually expand the 16K machine to 64K, which is, I believe, what they did there. And what that means is that each of these chips actually impact the entire memory and the machine boots fine. So most probably the RAM is fine because if any of the bits was not working, we would not have a, a functioning machine that does beep zap on zero page. Which tends to mean that it's only the display which is broken. And we can check that by trying to run some software. Yeah, so we are in the same setting, and I will select pushing the envelope, which is a slideshow demo, and it has music, and this using pretty much all of the memory, overlay memory, buffers inside, so let's see, we set Auric, yes. So we definitely have music. We have this blue thing which is a loading uh, and it's very hard to no choice that helps. And now that's the second part of the demo which will load plenty of pictures. And well, that's expected. So this is a Madrian picture, abstract art. It's even more abstract like that. So 
something we can notice here is that all these are made of small blocks of pixels. So that one was supposed to be a pirate ship. This is a picture from Le Diamant de l'Île Mobit, the Diamond Island. So, obviously, the code is working, it's loading data, but we only have large bits of graphics, we don't get the actual pixel fine details. So, I ended up with a theory that it was the actual uh, Soon she, um, graphic chip, the ULA, uh, being damaged. And as it happens, I do have a, a bunch of these. Uh, ULA H, uh, HCS 1017. Uh, so, I do have some extractor, but I found out that Flask Driver actually works best uh, on these. Just need to make sure to not bent too much. So that one is the original who came here on the Nova 8329 from Philippines. On that one well, it's also Philippines, but it has a different packaging, it's not glossy uh, like that one. So, let's see. And let's plug. And we have a video with no operating system on disk. So let's load the same demo. And so now you can see the expected pictures. So the RGB composition by Mondrian. The famous picture that we are discouraged to use now, but I mean, the demo has been released, so can't do much about that. A very different uh, cruise ship. The pirate ship we had earlier. The Diamond Island. Picture by Twilight. And some old demo picture I made a long time ago. So, this is working. 
So the machine is fixed. What's interesting is that obviously that was the ULA which was the, the cause of the problem, uh, but basically it's a partial failure because this chip is not only in charge of making the video display, it also does a memory refresh, it generates the sub frequencies for the various chips from the, the main clock. Um, and all these parts were working fine. Uh, the part which did not work at all was the generation of the apparently uh, the small pixel decoding. It, it got all the big blobs of colors working fine, the attribute, uh, but it was not able to display pixels. Uh, so yeah, that one I'm going to keep, probably put some uh, marker on it uh, to indicate it's broken. Uh, I should probably test all of these. Uh, but before I finish, so th this machine is fixed, but before I finish there, I'm going to show you how the diagnosis cartridge actually behaves on a working machine, so that can be useful for, for you eventually. I will need that, so I can put it right now, it's not a problem. Uh, these two we should only put when requested, oh, just so we can see. I'm going to put it like that, knowing that I need to keep access to the reset button uh, which is located here Auric diagram, RAM test passed, press NME to continue So these two green LEDs were actually not a fail code uh, uh, Probably the documentation should be updated to be more clear about uh, what that means and it probably means every time you have that, that you need to press uh, the button under to go to the next part. So let's press the button. So let's test the display attributes, the ability to show uh, to show colors, uh, flashing attributes, double size, etc. So this, this is working fine. And another variant uh, of the same uh, of the same test. Fit printer on cassette loopback. So I have the cassette loopback already, so I'm going to add the printer one. And press enemy to continue. VIA present pass, VIA timer one testing. Timer two testing. Port A pass, cassette output relay on the speaker testing, press enemy to continue, cassette input testing, strobe acknowledge testing, that of printer part, uh, remove printer loop back connector. PSD channel A, B, C confirm, noise confirm, confirm sweet on nose, low, mid, high, yes. PSG sweep, testing. That one you probably should not do if there is a dog around, uh, because it gets, gets quite high in frequency toward the end. It's doing bloop. Confirm turn sweep, press enemy to continue. Fit the keyboard loop back connector. So that one has indication uh, to say in which direction UHF modulator on speaker. Press PSG port A loop pass. All test passed, fit keyboard. Well, the keyboard is there. So yeah. Uh, there you go. Um, so there are plenty, plenty of tests and uh, documentation. So uh, this is the, the full card um, with uh, all the additional uh, tests for loopback and things um, and uh, the LED. But you can also uh, make your own EPROM and replace uh, the Auric uh, ROM uh, by the APROM and it will do most of the test, uh, like if it was on the cartridge. Uh, the main difference being that you don't have uh, the, the small LED light, something like that. Um, I've heard that there were a version with some uh, P 
pitch synthesis and uh, some uh, pin dwiggling on the bus that you can interpret uh, with the tester if you don't have that. Um, but yeah, so this machine is working. Uh, I just need to reassemble it. But uh, that's uh, all for this uh, repair. So here was a culprit. <laughs>